Old pal Gary Koffler is here. He is a great friend in the network, uh, a living legend. Uh, you have been in so many tech companies, but you've got a new venture. It's called Aquaponics. Gary is the Aquaponics Evangelist for School Grown Incorporated. They make, well, you know what? We took a look. So let's go out right now to Felton, California, and the School Grown Leaf Greenhouse at San Lorenzo Valley High School. So we're at the San Lorenzo Valley High School Greenhouse, and this is a leaf greenhouse, which stands for Living Ecosystem Aquaponic Facility. And it's an aquaponic garden that we have uh, some pretty good production out of, and the produce every single week then gets sent to the local school families. And when they come to pick up their kids, they grab a box of their produce as well and go home with some fresh produce every single week of the year. So this works uh, uh, by a system called aquaponics, which is a combination of aquaculture and hydroponic farming. And aquaculture, of course, is just raising fish in, in tanks and ponds and captivity, that sort of thing. And hydroponics is a soilless production of plants. And most aquaculture facilities, they, of course, have to dump their water because it accumulates the products of fish waste, which uh, in this case happens to be ammonia, which ultimately convert to nitrate. And nitrate is toxic to water systems, but it just so happens to be plant fertilizer. So when you marry those two systems together between aquaculture and aquaponics, then you have plants growing in fish waste fertilizer. And of course the plants then use up the nutrition, they pull the nitrates and all the other things that the plants need, and they return purified water back to the fish. So the water stays in an aquaponic system uh, for a very long time, if not forever. It's a closed loop or a nearly closed loop uh, system where the ecology supports one another and the water is just the medium that transfers nutrients back and forth. Well, aquaponics can be very small from little tabletop sized system on up to big commercial farms. Here we have a temporary tank, but it will have six 250 gallon tanks for this particular system. Uh, each tank holding about 100 pounds of fish load or so. The total system volume, I believe, is five or 6,000 gallons. But it's, once you fill up that five or 6,000 gallons, it only takes enough each day to add to it for whatever uh, evaporation takes place and the weight of the water that's in the plants and the fish themselves. We could probably go for half of a year with no water at all. Um, and if it just rains every now and then, we can even gather all our own water from rainwater collection. So we'll be supplying the solar power for this leaf greenhouse. Our company makes a solar panel that you can grow plants underneath. It's a semi-transparent material. It does two things. It creates electricity with standard silicon solar that you would see on an everyday black panel on your roof. And then it also alters the spectrum of light to be more efficient for photosynthesis. So plants like red light and they like blue light. And so our panel gives them extra red light, more than you'd see in the regular light spectrum. We also take away the green light and that is because plants don't like green light. They're, they're green because they are reflecting the green light away. So the black strips on this panel are the same material that you see in everyday solar panels. Um, but we dice it up and distribute it throughout the panel so that we're letting enough light through for the plants to grow. The kids do everything up here, you know, from, you know, planting seeds, pulling weeds, feeding fish. They raise their own fish, they raise their own plants, they build their own systems, they build their own biofilters, they build everything. Um, so it's a, exciting, you know, for me to see them, you know, create something uh, on paper or on computers and then actually follow through and build it. And for a lot of kids, it's the first time they've ever gotten an opportunity to really be in charge of their own projects up here. So it really builds a lot of confidence and it's... It's just, I think it's a good way to spend your day. And, and uh, you know, ideally with, you know, the way that education is changing now where the nation is trying to get kids more into problem solving and learning by doing, you know, we've been doing that here for a long time. Uh, it's just a simple Raspberry Pi computer, basically just a small computer, and it's hooked up to a temperature probe up here. Every 10 minutes between 9 a.m. and uh, 4 p.m., it checks the temperature. Depending on the readout, it will send a signal to this relay, which opens and closes the vent at the top of the greenhouse. The teacher told me about uh, the availability of a project, and uh, I was sort of uh, struggling with what to do because I didn't really have any like practical applications for a Raspberry Pi or anything like that. 
this project offered an opportunity that was a little different from everything everybody else was working on, so that was, that was something that I was interested in. I did a lot of the programming myself and uh, had to learn Python to do it, which it's a pretty simple language to pick up on. In the future, we, uh, we're planning on maybe putting in humidity or light controls for the greenhouse so that there's more automation overall, but that all depends on what they need and what I can figure out. So this whole greenhouse is designed to catch all its own water, to generate all of its own electricity. So this is a very sustainable project. That's what we're trying to do. We're here at schools, um, not so much to sell aquaponics, but to teach sustainability and to teach the new upcoming generation of kids that what they do on this planet has a cyclical action. It's not, I'm hungry, let's get food, and we don't care what happens along the side. We're gonna come right back around. All the systems on Earth, the water cycle, the nitrogen cycle, the carbon cycle, all of those work in cycles. And food and humans should be part of that cycle. And that's what sustainability is. Isn't that awesome? That kid, by the way, Ian Gallagher, was student of the week. Yes, he was. That week. Yes, he was. <laughs> I've had the lettuce. I don't know if it's from that yes, uh, farm. It is. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, I think people think, oh, fish poop. You always have fertilizer of some kind. Coming out of the back of a, a cattle or a horse. Yeah, it's, something. It's and, and it's delicious. And it, what is so neat is this is this closed uh, system. Mm -hmm. It's been around for about a thousand years. The Chinese have been doing it that long. Yeah. What kind of fish? We're raising uh, white sturgeon, catfish. Perch. Do people eat the fish ever? Or? They do, but you can't eat too many of them at a time because they're purifying the water for the plants, right. and you the need plants them. need to grow from the fish waste. Yeah. 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 So you have been, uh, like Leo said, in this world that we've been traveling in. You worked on Deja Vu, like for the Mac, some of my favorite products. What, uh, what got you from there to here? I was working with a Marin County company doing a VR game console prototype for Hasbro and Milton ba Bradley, but they didn't think that VR was ever going to amount to anything. Uh, so I, and now, uh, by the way, Mattel, I know when we did that Mattel thing, you said, got to get one of those. Is that kind of like what you were working on? Very much like that. We were yeah. working with Jaron Lanier and his goggles yeah. and his, his glove. Now and, they're doing a Viewmaster. Yes, they are. And then I started working with a, the same group, started doing things with expert systems, and I hooked it up to a fish tank to keep more tilapia alive than you could normally without uh, this expert system. And now I'm working on what's called an art of uh, augmented reality, where we're going to put the information about all of these greenhouses that we're building into an application so we can look at the greenhouses and see the different uh, factors that contribute to the uh, growth of the fish and the plants. And you're using Leo's favorite camera? The yeah, I knew Leo was taking his Theta S to Vegas, so we got the rep to give us the Theta S, and we got oh, some neat. video here from the inside of the uh, greenhouse. Oh, look at that. So people can go to uh, the Theta 360 uh, site and uh, look at this. Uh, what a great shot. I love that. Yeah. How much, what is the production of that? I mean, that looks like a ton of lettuce. Yeah, well, as we're coming into spring and summer, uh, we're going to be able to feed about 100 families uh, oh. every week. When Johnny every and week? When Johnny and Mary's parents come to pick them up after school, they take home a fresh box of uh, produce uh, wow. with lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, carrots, ras uh, radishes. And we talked about doing this at our house. How much would it be to get a small one? This is a CSA, uh, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture. For 13 weeks, uh, it's about $20, $25 a box. Nice. And people are sharing it with their uh, neighbors, and they're just wanting to support the program. That's yeah, really great. Mm -hmm. And that box is great. I, we got one that was really fantastic. Well, the, the plants are still alive when they get them. In fact, I've got plants now still well, That's why they're desk. so fresh. They are. They were picked oh. just an hour earlier. We keep them refrigerated in the, in the warehouse. And then uh, you can put them inside a Dixie cup with some distilled water, and they keep on growing. Wow. That's amazing. It's really interesting talking first about the Minecraft server and saying, you know, it's interesting to be in that world, but then also to have your hands on uh, the technology itself and to be doing things that really affect your daily life at this age. This is amazing. Yeah, I used to write uh, programs with the programmers that used to work for me, and it would take 18 months to 12 months. Ian did 12, it in the, how long? <laughs> he did it, but then also the, the, uh, our audience are people that are eating every day, two, three times a day. Right. So it's... Uh, we all have to. It's a real... Yeah. Uh, Sometimes four neat. for me. It's the best project of my life. <laughs> I remember you texting me saying, do you think you could use a Raspberry Pi to control uh, heating and cooling of a greenhouse? I said, I'm sure you could, and Ian figured it out very quickly. Yes, he did. Did a nice job. And we're going to add to it, and we're going to add all kinds of capabilities so we can monitor the, the temperatures, the humidity, the tank pumps, the seed wow. tables, and actually just push these things on an, on an application. 
Uh, this is also it. great for a high school curriculum. I mean, what a, I mean, they're learning so much from this. Well, we get the chemistry department in, checking the water conditions. The biology department's taking slides and looking at the microbes we're developing. The photo department's coming in to take pictures. They have an aquaculture program wow. there. So it fits in with the STEM and the core curriculums at the high schools. Yeah. So if, if someone's watching this that's in charge of uh, their uh, school's garden, what, what should they do? Uh, to start something like this? Where well, what they should do is they should come to our website, which is schoolgrown.org, and there's a place there where they can uh, make an inquiry. It's also a place there where they can donate because we are a nonprofit. Right. And uh, I imagine this involved. is expensive to build. It is, uh, but the good news is that part of this was actually paid for by the local community. The lumber yard gave us the lumber, and we got the pipe from one of the pipe companies. So uh, we got a lot of help from the community, and the fire department and the police department were out there to help us building this uh, last oh, that's July. That's really neat. And of course, there's the solar panels, the photovoltaic. Photovoltaic panels. panels, which also are light frequency filters, so the plants are getting the light they need. We're getting the uh, shade that we need, and then the electricity uh, gives us a uh, feedback into the system for when we do need to use uh, lights during the winter months. Is there a lot of electricity consumed? Are there pumps in here? We have like one that? pump. We're using one air pump to move all that water through really? the system. Really? That's yeah. all you need. Well, I'm working with uh, John Parr, who was in the picture there, and John, in my opinion, is the Steve Wozniak of aquaponics, <laughs> and. Uh, he uh, has been pioneering uh, aquaponic systems for the last uh, five, six years, and uh, he's trying to implement all the latest state-of-the-art and teach the kids so the kids can then contribute their ideas as well. This is a very nascent industry, but it's growing very quickly because we're using 90% less water than traditional agriculture, and it's, it's all delicious food. 90% 90, 90 less water. You've got those sprinklers going in the, uh, out in the fields. We're keeping the water in one place yeah. and just using yeah. it over and over. So it's, a seal, it's essentially a sealed system. There's evaporation. Evaporation, transpiration. We lose a little water when we're packaging up the, uh, the, the, the uh, plants for distribution. It's really remarkable. Yeah. What a great idea. Schoolgrown.org. Schoolgrown.org. For more information. By the way, I should just mention that the Linux was already done before we began uh, the segment. But I'm going to hold on to this and show you the next couple of steps. But that's how, I mean... Remember how hard it was to mm -hmm. install Linux? It is, it's like trivially easy. It's faster than installing uh, Windows. Uh, and you're, and this, this laptop, the touch works, everything works on that. Gary, I want to thank you so much. Uh, Gary is in our chat room as I do tech. You'll see him uh, fairly frequently in there. And uh, we've known Gary for ages and ages. And uh, it's just nice to see you doing something <laughs> really, uh, really cool. Best work of my life. Yeah, really fun. Schoolgrown.org. Thank you, Gary.